what up? This is Jake One uh, back with another Behind the Beat. Uh, this is a really old one for uh, a song I did for G Unit on their first album, Beg for Mercy. Uh, the song is called Better Ask Somebody. Uh, this song came about, um, it was kind of my early stage of, uh, you know, making beats and just trying to get past Seattle and getting my stuff to bigger artists. So at this point, I'm giving my beats to, you know, anybody who had a connection outside the city um, to a, you know to managers other producers djs um, a thing that really worked for me a lot back then is i'd become friends with the dj from most of the artists that would come to town because uh they were always looking for records and that was kind of my thing i'd take take them digging and stuff like that put them up on records and i give them my beats um you know as part of it and then one of these guys that I met was uh, Matt Skills, and Matt Skills is DJ Fusion. Um, Fusion was taking, you know, he took some of these beats I had given him around, and he happened to, I think they went on tour with 50 or something, right around Get Rich or Die Trying. Um, he gave the beat to Shaw Money, and they cut to it. They recorded a song to it, and uh, Fusion tells me this. I'm hype. I'm like, at the, at the time, I'm not even gonna lie, it wasn't. I didn't even know G Unit had an album coming out. I'm full in backpacker mode. I, mean, I, I was definitely into the Rockefeller stuff, but I wasn't like a G Unit stan or none of that. I wasn't like, you know, it just, you know, you couldn't avoid it. It was big, but it wasn't like, I wasn't making beats for that purpose. So I was excited though, this was a big artist. Uh, I sent the files to Fusion told me yeah you know they're gonna use it and it's you know I kind of had a lot of false starts around that time where big artists would get my beats and they wouldn't end up using it on the album I might have even got paid a couple times but the records weren't coming out um, so eventually you know this this album comes out and I, I went off on my lunch break at, uh, at the courthouse King County Courthouse shout out to everybody over there um, and yeah I went down to like music land downtown and I bought it and first thing I'm making sure is like, okay, this is really my beat. All my names in there. So you don't know, kind of doing the checklist. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like, you know, the song's dope. I thought the album was really dope. I remember thinking uh, the first beat High Tech did on there. I was just like, I just knew I had to get, <laughs> I had to get a lot better if I wanted to keep doing this when I heard that. Um, so yeah, that ended up being my first, uh, you know, big big like I think the album went double or triple platinum um and it was you know my first experience with a lot of these things trying to get royalties I have publishers calling me trying to sign me to fucked up deals and all these things were kind of coming at me and I still had a day job I didn't really look at music like it was gonna be uh something I would do for a living like that it was something I was getting some traction in but it wasn't like yeah let's uh you know go buy, you know, a house off this music and quit my job. I wasn't thinking that at all. So, you know, this started obviously a, a, a long run I had with June and signing with Shot Money. Um, and I did a bunch of records for them, you know, probably, I don't know, somewhere over 10 songs uh, that came out for those guys. So this will always be a special one to me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna break it down. It started off with a library record and, uh, kind of added some stuff to it and it turned out to be uh this joint really this beat started with uh this uh tele music library that i bought uh, tv themes 45 i guess it is um i happened to get this record um in i don't know 2001 or two i visited uh my boy joey chavez who was living in San Francisco at the time, and um, he was selling some records. And I just heard this piece, and I think I think I bought it off him for like fifty bucks or twenty five bucks. Um, but yeah, I heard this this thing. The song's called Blue Leopard. It's definitely like a, it is like a TV theme ish kind of song. So. It's got a weird like swing beat though, like. I knew I had to get that out of there because that was not going to work as far as like making a dope beat. So 
I got you know that that sample chopped up in the SR, and uh, you know, first step is just kind of to lay the melody of uh, one of what I wanted the foundation of the beat to be. So, see, I took all the different pieces and separate them so I can make them kind of play in the rhythm I want and get rid of, get rid of that whimsical thing. So I start with that kind of basic riff right there. <clears throat> and uh, then I added this hi hat that was kind of like a driving thing. Uh, it was really like a Chronic 2001 was a style. We were just doing those kind of one, two kind of beats where it didn't have a lot of hi-hats um, and it was just like kind of a one, two thing. And the bass line was really doing the work. It's kind of actually kind of a similar thing I did on Rock Cocaine Flow too, which I never really thought about, but yeah. Same, same vibe. So add, <clears throat> add the snare. I actually have the kick snare and that um, cymbal thing all on different tracks for whatever reason. Very simple, very simple. So it's kind of moving, I mean, the big thing is that the uh, the sample just didn't have enough juice to really really get that bottom that I wanted. So I just ended up replaying that same melody with this bass sound. It's an um, ASR bass sound. Um, I believe I got it from Vitamin, maybe from Bean. I don't know, back in those days, we used to trade sounds a lot, so. Um, So yeah, it's kind of moving. Um, I also played uh, the MS-2000, which was like a real early, uh, you know, new newer kind of uh, synth that they had put out. I think Battle Cat was using it. I might have seen him in a picture with it. And I tried it at Guitar Center, thought the shit was dope. And that was like kind of one of my first things getting into synths. Um, And back then I didn't know how to do MIDI that well. So I ended up resampling it in here. And I can't even figure out how I sequence it. So I'm just gonna play it as it's sequenced. Cause it's, it's a little tricky. Bend is a little, <laughs> a little bit struggling, but it's gonna work. Uh, then I also had this sound uh, from the MS two thousand as well, because um, I'm just you know I'm trying to build on this beat so there'd be other parts to rap to, so it just wouldn't be such a monotonous thing going over and over. Even if it was the same loop, I just wanted other parts to come in and out. So this part. I think that's what I did. Maybe it goes the other part later. 
So yeah, I got that, that synth in there, kind of just more texture. So yeah, the final piece of this was just a string to kind of give it more of that, that uh, just more parts to, you know, to go to um, in the sequence. ones you know pretty simple but there you have it uh g unit better ask somebody um the beat originally was called um eddie munster ish eddie munster shit um because that's what it sounded like